folks, welcome back to another episode of the Liverpool Complete Playthrough. This series is as regular as, well, this series in the first season. No, it's not. The first season was pretty regular. Anyway, since we last met, uh, just time has passed, really. But our form in the season has been decent, I would say, considering we've had some Champions League fixtures in there. And since the 6 one was drumming by West Ham at the London Stadium, we've actually not done too badly, if you look at the, st look at the situation we've been in. Um, wins in our last four out of five games see us... In decent form, you know, that 1-1 that one -one draw against Leicester will be something I'm sure will rue over time. But a, a derby win last time out with Salah and De Bruyne on the score sheet was something we very much enjoyed. Today, then, a game against Middlesbrough, who are still in the Premier League. Of course, in real life, got relegated and currently eighth in the league table. Now, with the the, the winter wonderland that it is, the, uh, the December period is obviously quite a busy period. So rotation in the next few episodes will probably be quite common so keep an eye out for that uh, and Middlesbrough should be the sort of game again that we're looking to take points from it's the sort of game you should definitely be winning Ben so don't mess it up essentially as uh, Sergio Agro resumes full training now in terms of fitness are we are we good or do they need a break let's give them a little break uh, we'll give them probably just a day I think a day, a day will probably do it it's something that I, I've done more and more uh, this year on Football Manager not something I did in previous years and there was no real reason for me to not do it in previous years I just didn't realise just how much of an effect it had but actually resting players I find is, is something that's made, I wouldn't say be a better manager or football manager this year, but certainly something. It's, it's a tip that I've picked up and I will now carry on through like future games, and that's not something I was doing previously. So I think that that's like every year you try and pick up these little things that you do and then consistently do them. I think like knowing what to do for team talks and, and press conferences and knowing like the things to say are things you pick up over time. And I think now resting players, when there's a gap of sort of two to three days, uh, or at least not a week, like if there's a week long break, I don't find you need to rest players. But if there's anything less than that, especially with Champions League stuff, you may as well let the first team, much, much like in real life, right? Players play a full match and then uh, have light training, less training, and then have like a session before a game day maybe and then play the match and that is essentially their their workout uh, whereas players that obviously aren't playing as regularly do have like a full training schedule hence the players that I'm having on the bench right now they, they just can go about the business as normal uh, and don't necessarily need the rest as you can see on match day now all of the conditioning and uh, what, what's, the, what's the other one sharpness yeah uh, it looks really really good so Team for today's game, as I say, away at Middlesbrough. Um, there's not really, I say, our form's been decent recently. The, the one thing we're missing so far, I'd say, this season is probably a goal scorer. If you take a look at there, Grow on 11. I mean, actually, to be fair, he is the goal scorer, but without him, there's not really anyone banging in the goals. I guess Salah with eight is pretty good. 20 appearances, eight off the bench, looking pretty good. Um, I think with Agüero back, we'll put him straight in. We're not going to waste any time with trying to sort of work him back into the side. Let's just get him straight involved again. Uh, and see how he gets on. Pastore is going to drop out for Firmino. And that, I think, is going to be that. Unless we bring a central midfielder in. Maybe Gurovic on the bench for someone like uh, Klein, probably. Wow. Is that the situation we're in right now where we're dropping Nathaniel Klein out of the squad entirely because Alexander Arnold's playing quite well? Well, I didn't think that would be a thing, but apparently it is. Um, of course, it's nice to have so much depth there. Uh, I guess that's something to be, to be happy about, right? Right, yeah, good. Uh, now let's see what Middlesbrough are up to then and see if they've bought anyone good. They're eighth position in the table, which is their second season in the Premier League after, of course, last season. So they must have strengthened because in real life, of course, they went down. So let's let's take a quick look at that because I'm sure there'll be some Middlesbrough fans interested. Uh, Haller plays up front for them, who was bought for 6.75 million. Eight goals in 18 appearances. He's looking pretty good then. He's probably a key player uh, this season for them. Uh, elsewhere, are we loaning them Harry Wilson so he won't be able to play? Oh, no, we sold them Harry Wilson so he could play today. Uh, but he's, now, now he's on loan at Gillingham. Brilliant. Um, Carvalho is coming as well from Benfica on loan. Ronaldo Vieira from Leeds. And Pablo Marie. Uh, has also come in defender. So they've not done too much to be fair. Jordan Rhodes was sold and Brad Guzan for 6.25 million. Heavens above. Well, uh, it should be a game then. I'm thinking we should probably win. Obviously, we're Liverpool, they're Middlesbrough. This should be straightforward. But as we've seen recently with that draw against Leicester, we are prone to the, the occasional... Let's see, I was going to use the, the phrase slip up, but it's still a bit... Still a bit sore to say the word slip up. Anyway, let's see how we get on. Uh, we're currently looking at a, a grey screen. But we're at Middlesbrough, at the Riverside. And to me, Middlesbrough are like a bit of a classic Premier League side. There's probably a few sides, actually, that float between the Championship and the Premier League. But Middlesbrough, growing up, were always a Premier League side for me. I think it was like 2009, maybe. Maybe a little bit later. I'm sure Middlesbrough fans will remember. When they eventually got relegated. As uh, Jordan Henderson has a shot just deflected wide. Back in the northeast for him. He'll be enjoying it. Um, but then Middlesbrough always a mainstay. Players like Ravinelli growing up. Janino. Like, they were the players that Middlesbrough had. And you sort of... There's always players at teams. JJ Kotcher at Bolton was a good example as well, right? Jorkef when he was there for a bit. For some of you, 
I'll have said four names there that you won't be entirely familiar with. Although Akocha is, is, is kind of a bit more of a legend, isn't he? Um, there's always teams that you didn't necessarily follow, but they would have certain players that you would just know of. Like De Canio was one of those as well. When he used to play, I think he had a spell at Sheffield Wednesday, right? And then went to and then went to West Ham. But like, there's just players that you would remember. Middlesbrough had quite a few of those players that you just remember for remembering sake because they were either really creative or foreign. Actually, at the time, there wasn't like a massive influx of foreign players. So when someone like Ravanelli came along, and for those that don't remember Ravanelli, he would he, his famous celebration would be to put like take a shirt off or put a shirt over his head, and it was called like doing a Ravanelli. So being a kid, that was like the sort of thing you would do. Yeah. So so that's what I mean. Middlesbrough for me. Classic Premier League side. As uh, the first half has kind of been and gone, we've seen very little from Aguero. He's on a six point five, and that really suggests to me, like it's easy to look at that and go, "He's having a poor game." And this is probably something I fall, I fall foul of quite often. Is that you look at that and you go, "He's having a poor game." Like, do we take him off? But in reality, we're probably not feeding him enough. So if if we get him the ball, that's probably going to be the thing that improves it so let's go slightly more attacking let's get the ball slightly further forward maybe a little bit quicker towards him as well of course we play retain possession we'll take that off for the second half play a little bit mixed and try and get Sergio Aguero involved like again 6.4 now not even the greatest of games he is back fresh off an injury so that might be playing a part and that might lead to us taking him off on around 70 if he's not found the back of the net but I just thought you know as a lethal finisher clinical finisher this is the sort of game where a deadlock might need to be broken, and that is the sort of game it's been so far. And I thought, do you know? I, hmm. All right, twenty minutes to go. Changes. I think we're going to bring on a couple of players. Then we're going to bring on. I think we're going to go for a triple change. Gruich is going to come in, in the centre to play alongside Henderson. Firmino is going to come back in for Aguero. Do you know what? that's all we'll do for now? Lalana for De Bruyne is tempting, but we'll leave it as is. We are more dominant in the game. Uh, we'll be slightly less fluid, so we'll try and work the ball a little bit quicker again. And uh, Salah apparently has picked up an injury with 10 minutes to go. There's a highlight as well. Let's get Lalana on for Salah and go back to this highlight and see if it's in our favour. It is. Gruic has got it a little bit deeper, plays it forward the, uh, in the gap towards Williams. He puts the ball back across and Salah, when he's at the bar, I mean, it said he should be taken off. That was my instructions from my assistant. He's struggling a little bit, not having the greatest of games, so maybe that late change might just do the trick. But so far... And even Stephen Game, and, and occasionally in this series, we do have quite dull games. Not that many nil-nils, though, I wouldn't say. Uh, throughout the series, I think most games, there's at least been a goal. Sometimes there's a very late goal that we see, and this might be one of those games. Again, not much action going on. And it looks as if with this final corner of the piece, unless it goes in, Alana to the front post, out to De Bruyne. We're going to get one more opportunity, in a sense, to put the ball into the middle. As De Bruyne goes backwards, the ball in is really poor. And uh, Van Dijk's actually be given offside. Of course, may well have signed for Liverpool by the time you see this. Um, hopefully he has. I, I literally can't predict the future, so I don't know. Uh, so there we are, the nil-nil. A way clean sheet. I mean, that's the, that's the positive to take from it. But apart from that, I mean, I'm going to get slightly aggressive with him. That wasn't good enough. This is not the sort of game you can afford to be dropping points in. It's sort of a must-win in that regard. A goal difference as well. 25 conceded, so a clean sheet is almost a luxury for us. Uh, Salah's injured as well. He's out for four to seven days. So I'll miss the next game. And uh, how is our squad looking as we go into the next one then? Keita is still out as well for two weeks. So he won't be back just yet. We're getting close to a January transfer window. We've got 12 million in the bank. It is going to be the sort of scenario that if we're going to really improve, we're probably going to have to sell. I think Nangolan back into the side might be key as well. Uh, we've rested in for a few games and Emre Shan might have to step out uh, and Nangolan may well replace him. So that ends it there then. A nil-nil draw. Admittedly not the most exciting episode, but I got to chat about Rav uh, Fabrizio Ravanelli for a little bit, so that was nice. Uh, again, shout out to Giannini. I don't want him to feel left out. Um, but we stay in fifth position then and the league title is becoming very difficult to get. Although, actually, when I look at this, United dropped points. They did. They dropped points to Newcastle. So the gap didn't widen quite as much as it could have. Still eight points in it. And, uh, of course, we play a lot of these big guns later on in the season around that Leverkusen time. We've got games against Arsenal, Chelsea, and Manchester United. So that should be, well, set to be at least, quite interesting in Middlesbrough, of course, in the final day. So there we are then. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, then the Liverpool playthrough, do drop a like on it. Let's aim for a modest sort of 300 likes. If you're still enjoying the series, drop one uh, before you go. And we love with care from Little Until next time, goodbye. I've just realised I'm bringing this out on the 1st of September, and that's my birthday. So happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to end the video, Ben.